Okay, it's getting ready, but have you started yet? Hi, welcome everybody to Grandma Reads a Story. I'm Josh, your teen services librarian at the Pontiac Public Library, filling in for Bonnie, our youth services librarian. And with me today from Catholic Charities of Southeast Michigan, we have Grandma Kay. Hi, Grandma Kay, how are you doing? And you. I'm good. So Grandma Kay is gonna read two stories to us. And we're gonna be ready here whenever you're ready to get started, Grandma Kay. Okay. I only have two books and I read both of them. Yep. Um, this is for the real one though now. So just start with start with elbow grease. Elbow grease. John Cena, elbow grease. When your brothers are monster trucks, they tend to play rough. Elbow grease need a break from playing with flash, cash, pinball, and tank. Mel, the mechanic, invite him to go to the junkyard to look for spare parts. The junkyard was sprawling stuff with discarded parts and broken down mechanic. The elbow grease. It seemed like a dump to mail. It was most exciting place in the whole world. She dug through the junk pile with her shovel if hunting for treasures. Elbow grease went off to explore. He climbed to the top of the highest peak of jump, and that's when he saw it. The gleaming purple purple monster psycho was named Chopper. When she finished training, she noticed she had an audience. Mel was clapping so hard her hands hurt. And Elbow Grease felt a little jealous. Mel was flabbergasted. It was better than anything she had ever built. Chopper recognized Elbow from the King of the Curve video she had been, she had seen online. Mel invited Chopper back to the demolition derby to meet the whole team. 
both carried the spare part. Mel had collected and followed as close behind as he could. When Chopper arrived at the demolition derby, Pinball was entreated. Flash was stung. Cash was amazed. Tank was excited to play. At first, the truck was impressed with chopper speed, skill, strength, and style. But then their enthusiasm actually didn't last long. Chopper was fast than flash. Chopper was smarter than pinball. Chopper was more daring than crash. And despite being smaller, Chopper was tougher than tank. Mayor plugged elbow grease in to recharge and offered Chopper some gas for lunch. Elbow grease was shocked. Mayor was impressed. After lunch, Chopper could tell something was bothering her new friend. And secure surge through elbow grease circuit, and he shouted before thinking about his words. Chopper was hurt. She raced out the garage without saying a word. Back at the junkyard, Chopper had never felt more alone. She thought she had finally made some friends. But then she acted like a show off and pushed them away. She was so frustrated that she began to destroy a beautiful stunt course. As Chopper crashed and smashed through the scrap, she knocked loose the base of the giant junk yard crane. She was shouting too loudly to hear the turbo creak as the crane began to fall. The falling crane scrapped and sparked against elbow grease bumper as he shoveled Chopper out of the way at the very last second. Mel and the truck helped Chopper put the junk back in order. The end of this story. Okay. So that was our first story about elbow grease. And um, what did you like about that story, Grandma Kay? Well, what I like about it, you know, it's, it's a good book to read to the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that's a good 
-hmm. I think it's important to know that even if you're the smallest and having a hard time, that you can still play with the bigger guys. And yeah, it was nice to have the encouraging friend in there who mm -hmm. tried to make elbow grease see everything better. So yeah. What did you think about uh, elbow grease being jealous of Chopper? Why do you think that was? Uh, well, let me see. Oh, I can't catch. Can't. Okay, I. Hmm. I really can't give no answer on that. Okay. My thoughts are I was thinking that Elbow Grease was jealous because Chopper was showing off to like the older brothers and they were impressed. So Elbow Grease was like a little worried that his brothers were so impressed with this new person, but not with him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's just something that the, he had to deal with and work past. Okay. So let's see what other lessons we can learn in our next story. Tell us what the next one is. Okay. I'll be reading what the road said. Okay. Who's that by? Bye. I have it written down here. It says it's by Cleo Wade. Cleo Wade, mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever wanted to go in a different direction? I said to the road, what do you, where do you lead? The road said, be a leader and find out. Showing out. Right here telling be a leader and find out. How do I start? I asked the road, smiled and said, you have already started. But what happened when I get there? We have just begun, said the road. Do not skip straight to the ending. Enjoy the beginning and the middle too. if I get scared. That's okay. You're brave, said the road. But do, but what does it mean to be brave? I asked. The road guided me through a very gloomy forest. Even though I was frightened, I trust the road. And as I took one step and then another step, after that, the road gently whispered. Being brave is when you are afraid of doing something. But you do it anyway. Do not let what scare you keep you from continuing on your path. Will I always move forward? Not always, said the road. Why not? 
because sometimes you will stumble backwards and sometimes you will stand still. What if I fall? Everyone fall at some point, said the road, but it will always be there when you land. if I get lost. There may be some days that feel long and dark, said the road. But I promise that no matter what, I will give you the evening star and the morning sun to lighten your way. What if I grow weary or get hurt? It will give you trees of all shapes and size to shelter you when you need to rest and heal, said the road. What if I get lonely? You're never alone, said the road. What if I change? Come with me, said the road. And as I move forward, the road introduced me to caterpillars and a family of seeds. We did not stay long. The road began taking me on a journey through the season. I watched summer turn to fall and fall turn to, to winter. And as spring was sprung, was upon us, I realized that we had gone in one big, beautiful circle. I looked down and found I was standing in front of the caterpillar and it sees once more. Only the caterpillar was no longer a caterpillar and it sees had turned to flowers of every color swaying in the sun. It rolled then raised me up and said, all things grow through change. That is the magic of being alive. You too will find your wings. You too will bloom. No living thing is meant to stay the same. What if I need help on my journey? Ask your fellow traveler along the way. What if they are mean to me? Lead them to kindness, said the road. How? By being kind. What if they want to fight? Lead them to peace, said the road. But how do I lead them to peace? By listening to their stories, telling them yours, and remind them that you are all on this journey together. What if the world around us is filled with hate? Lead it to love. 
by sharing the power of your love with it, said the road. What if something unexpected happened? Keep going. What if there are mountains that tell too tall to climb? What if what if there are rivers? that feed too wide to cross. What if I get my heart broken? What if I feel stuck? What if giving up is easy? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, said the road. What if I can't do it? You can save the road. How do you know? Because you have come this far, save the road. I say to the road. Why do you lead? The road said, be a leader and find out. It's the end of this reading this book. That was a nice book. Mm -hmm. Now, what did you think of the book, Graham McKay? Okay, it'd be a good, you know, book to read to the kids in school, tell them don't give up. Yeah, it's a good important it's, message for them to know. Uh-huh. It's like, you know, they have some home, some work they they uh, can't do. Let's keep trying. Yeah, you gotta keep trying. But yeah. You need help. Mm -hmm. And so obviously you and I both know that roads can't talk, but in this case, right. the road did. Mm -hmm. So. Why do we think it was important that the road was able to talk in this book? Uh, well, the writer of, you know, of the book, you know, she just wanted to, she just wanted to write the book, you know, saying, you know, it was a road, but she know roads don't talk. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I got the impression that the road was supposed to be like encouraging the reader to keep, mm -hmm. keep on Don't give up. Whereas like the, the narrator, the person who the story is about was filled with a lot of doubt. So yeah. The road was encouraging them to keep going. Mm -hmm. So it was a nice contrast. Um, did you have a favorite story of the two that we read today? Well, I like both of them. They were, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're both very good. Mm -hmm. I think I was, I preferred the second one a little more. I liked the story about the road talking to you. It just seemed like a cool idea to me. And it had some nice images to it. Mm -hmm. but they were both very good books. Yeah. With great messages for the kids. And I just want to. Thank you, Graham McKay, for taking the time to join us and read to us today. And I'm going to remind everybody that this is a weekly program. So it'll be happening again next Wednesday at 3.30. And we hope mm -hmm. you can join us then. Okay. Yep. Thanks so much. Have a nice yeah. day. Same to you.